Here's another figure that I cleaned up exactly the same way as I've just shown you. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to base him with some sharp sand and gravel. First of all, I've got some section of sprue here. This is a good technique to make sure that he looks like he's actually walking on the ground and not through it. You often see a lot of figures with sand halfway up the legs and it looks really silly because it doesn't really happen that way. Not unless you're walking through quicksand. So unless you want to intentionally include that, this is the best way to do it. I'm going to cut off about a millimetre block. Just two, one for each foot. And we're going to apply them with some super glue. Just a dab on each foot. Another good technique for picking up small parts is to use the tip of the blade. Just scab it in very gently and that will hold it quite securely. So we've got those two parts now glued to his feet. And use a bit of accelerator. I'll show you a little bit more about this later on. And a drop more super glue on the bottom of the blocks. And we're going to attach him to the base in the appropriate position. If you're going to include a unit of figures, make sure that they all rank up. By that I mean make sure that they all sit side by side without getting in each other's way. Because that's an important thing about games like Warhammer. Um, plan, your, plan your unit and test assemble it with a little bit of blue tack if you need to do. So that's nice and dry now already. Um, I'm going to add some watered down PVA and I'll show you the effect of that that achieves. This you need to drill in about two millimeters, that's all. I'll show you that drill in action. <coughs> that's created a hole into that socket. I'm going to drill the same hole in the corresponding area which is the arm. Right here a small section of brass rod. This is available from most model railway shops and stuff like that. Um, it's available in several diameters. I like this sort of medium thickness. Don't, don't use it too thin because it kind of negates the need to have it in the first place. Um, obviously don't overdo the size because sometimes it can be as thick as your parts. Um, okay, so we've drilled our holes. I'm going to add a little bit of super glue to the end there. It's important when you drill the holes, by the way, to make it the diameter a little bit bigger than your brass rod. Um, it's going to not only help the super glue to flow in, but just make sure that it fits in the first place. Otherwise, you'll just have to re-drill it all over again. So you're going to save yourself a little bit of work. So, a blob of super glue on the end. Don't overdo it. That's more than enough. Attach that into the hole, and you can see the way the super glue that, dribble, that super glue dribbled in there. I'm going to add this stuff. This is Accelerator. It's by Grip. There's many brands of this available. Uh, they all amount to the same thing, and that's to ensure that the super glue sets within seconds and bonds very firmly. So I'm going to apply a squirt of that to it. It'll evaporate when you blow on it. That's a very strong bond now. I'm going to chop that down to a more realistic size. You only want it to be about three to five millimeters. That's more than enough. You're going to have to clip this peg down a couple of times before you ensure a proper fit. Don't worry about that because you really only need about two millimeters worth of brass rod. The length of the rod uh, doesn't matter. It's not going to affect the joint. It's the fact that the rod's there that's going to help to reinforce that super glue. So I'm going to check now and see how much more we need to clip off. Not a great deal, perhaps another two millimeters. So I'm going to place my thumb there so I'll know roughly that that's how much we need to clip off. Everything is all set now and made, I made sure all the discrepancies are out of the figure. I've got an old spray can lid here. Um, I've attached some blue tap to the top of it. And I'm going to press that figure onto it. Okay, this is going to be our handle basically for spraying the figure. The spray can lid is going to protect your fingers because it can be quite painful to get off your skin. Um, and it's also going to enable us to manoeuvre that in any direction to make sure that we can get the best coverage possible. The spray can has been 
shaking for a good two minutes. We've got that agitator going in there. Make sure you hear that, that rattle. Um, so it's been shaking for a good two minutes. I'm going to show you now the technique for spraying. Spraying indoors today, this is for the, simply for the purpose of the DVD. I would normally spray outside, um, but make sure again, adequate ventilation is very important wherever you're spraying. Uh, and if you do have to spray indoors, wear some kind of a particle mask. About six inches away from the figure. Short bursts are all that you need. Spray the base as well. Don't worry about covering the entire figure. If you've got missed areas, I'll show you what to do in a little while. Set that aside to dry. It should only be about 10-15 minutes, depending on the room temperature. And we'll come back to this in a little while. Here's another figure that's been nicely undercoated and it's been left to dry. I've got some Chaos Black here. Um, I've watered this down to roughly the consistency of milk. It's not too watery and not too thick. When we paint this on, most of the water that's involved in the mixture will evaporate and leave behind a black film. Um, so you're not going to obscure any details. Don't worry about it at this stage. So I'm going to paint this into any undercoats any undercuts where the undercoat has actually missed. So any grey areas of plastic that are still peeping through will touch up. You can actually paint a figure this way, um, you can actually undercoat it this way, but it is a different paint than the undercoat. The undercoat is a much tougher paint. Um, if you paint this stuff straight over plastic it will have a tendency to scratch. So spraying is a good idea. So once you've painted that all over, it's going to need to be left to dry before we move on to the next stage of undercoating. If you're a little bit impatient like I am sometimes, um, I just use an old hair dryer. I've taken the end cap off uh, because you're guaranteed then not to produce too much heat at a focal point. So you've got more of an ambient heat from the end. Use it on a low setting. This has got a cool setting, um, which is ideal if you, if you can get one with a cool setting. Because as you're heating up the plastic, you really don't want it to melt. So I'm going to give this a blast over now with the hairdryer. Once it's nicely dry, we can, I can show you the next special technique for undercoating. The same basic colours we had before, um, for the second stage highlight, I'm just going to have a little bit more elf flesh in there uh, to bring it up to this slightly lighter tone. I'll just apply this over the mixture we had before and you can see there how it's just marginally lighter. This we're going to paint in exactly the same way, in exactly the same areas as before but not quite three quarters of the way down. This time we're going to just go halfway down. So you'll actually be able to see certain areas that I've already touched up here, like the muscles on his back. Keep it quite restricted. Start again at the top using that same brush technique. And you've probably been noticing um, as I go along, I've been using my little finger as a pawl stick, um, a pawl stick something that sign writers use to keep the brush steady. Um, it's not feasible on this scale to use a stick, so I use my little finger and from here I can, I can manoeuvre my brush virtually anywhere on the model without losing any steadiness. So it's a good technique to try and learn this. It might not necessarily work for you because I'm left handed, but you could develop a similar technique, be you right handed or whatever. Dry brushing is a very rudimentary technique. It's ideal for painting miniatures. Uh, it's very quick, very simple. You don't need to do anything special. Um, for some reason it's on the decline these days and I don't know why. Um, it really is quite a nice technique if it's done correctly. Um, I've tra painted the trousers here in, in a dark blue and I've got some old kitchen towel and I've got a slightly lighter shade of that blue. Uh, just added a little bit of white. I'm going to make sure all that paint scrubbed off my brush. This is why it's called the dry brush technique. So as you can see there, there's virtually no paint left on that brush. And if the details are running across ways, you want to brush up and down. If the details are running vertically or up and down, you want the brush left to right. So I'm going to start in the largest areas. At first it's not going to look like much is happening. Um, it is important to be quite subtle with this though. Make sure you don't rush it because it will look very bitty and very grainy. 
So I'm going to do that. 